Om Shanti. And here we have two deeply inspiring and practical yogis today who are going to have a conversation with each other, maybe an interview, on the path of the pilgrim. So Sister Veronica McHugh, also known affectionately as Wadi, Sister Wadi, has maintained a serious yoga practice for 44 years. She leads the Brahma Kumaris in Florida. Her warmth and her friendliness bring an instant sense of belonging to all who meet her. She also goes to various countries, leading national retreats, and is part of many of the programs directly broadcast from United States. Then brother BK Dr. Sachin combines the qualities of a medical doctor with those of a yogi and the mystical understanding of applied spirituality. He came into knowledge in 2003 having visited Mount Abu and having pursued a uh, perused actually the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads as well as various Western religions, philosophies, psychology and the history. We all know him here more by the WhatsApp messages that you receive where he has turned uh, points, blessings uh, on the group, the self-progress group in Panda Bhavan. So a warm hand of applause for a wonderful interview conversation between Sister Wadi and Brother Sach. Om Shanti. Good morning everyone and welcome. I think a lot of people have perhaps left today, uh, but still it's a big hall and we're going to try have uh, an intimate conversation in a public space. The topic that was chosen, The Pilgrim's Progress, a very famous book, maybe about 400 years old, and is often referenced in relation to a journey, particularly a spiritual journey. But even if one doesn't consider oneself spiritual, each and every human soul is on a pilgrimage, whether they know it or not. I'm curious to know first, who of you came to Baba in a country other than that in which you were born in or grew up in? How many came to Baba in a different country? Not so many. Did you have the consciousness that you were on a pilgrimage? Certainly for myself, having traveled extensively before finding my way here, it was only after many years that I realized that all my traveling was, in fact, a pilgrimage. And I was sharing this with someone the other day, And she pointed out to me, she herself is maybe about 25 years younger than I am and about 20 years younger in Gyan. And she referenced many of the souls who came in the mid-70s and the early 80s, like me, were travelers. I could give you a list of names and countries, many taking birth here in Madhavan itself. And then she said that she didn't have that inclination but that her pilgrimage was through books. And so I would like to ask my dear brother if he considers himself a pilgrim and to tell us about his journey. It really is quite fascinating. And I give him the floor on this one and I won't interrupt him because it is so very interesting. Om Shanti. Good morning. 
since my childhood i used to see myself as sitting amidst mountains doing some tapasya but i did not know where are those mountains and i have passed through at least four turning points in life the first was after my 12th standard my father got me some books because my parents wanted me to become a doctor so in india there is a medical college in sevagram maharashtra which was the work field of mahatma gandhi and to qualify that exam you had to clear four subjects physics chemistry biology and the fourth was gandhian thoughts so my father got me those books of mahatma gandhi so i was a very mischievous boy once upon a time has changed <laughs> so i finished my 12th standard exam and my father told me that you have to clear this exam so you read this book so the name of the book was the story of my experiment with truth and i started reading that book first day second day third day fourth day and as i was reading that book suddenly i became silent because i saw in author's narration as if my own story the author said that i stole i ate non veg i lied to my father even though i hadn't done any one of these things but i still felt just as author repented i should also repent so suddenly that book threw me into a silence and that silence was so strong that for nearly next 6 months i did not speak with anyone it was absolute silence not a single word came out from my mouth and in that period of silence there was a deep spiritual awakening suddenly someone sleeping within got up and everything appeared to me as a mystery i lost interest in everything except this search this quest as to who is god who am i and yet there was in my home there was yet another book the name of the book was love of god by saint francis de sales and as i was reading that book i was touched by author's love of god he was saying that my heart is bleeding i am pierced by that arrow of love of god it is the wound which is unhealing and just these two things happened and my spiritual journey started and i started seeing two things one path going towards the world another path going towards spirituality towards god and in that period of silence many things happened which i cannot just explain in words but then my result exam result came and i got very good marks i got admission in mbbs i went to another place which was about 2 hours journey from my place and 4 uh, and 1/2 years mbbs on one side was medical study on other side was spiritual quest so every day i used to go to some temple some spiritual place i heard hundreds and hundreds of spiritual discourses ramayana mahabharata and multiple other things most of the mbbs studies even i finished sitting in temple i used to love that peaceful and calm atmosphere so mbbs finished 
we used to stay in hostel and everybody went home i did not go because i knew that there was a silence and then there was a upheaval of medical studies and i wanted to go back to that silence so i stayed back in hostel and again i heard another discourse for seven days and again that inner spirit was awakened so that was the second turning point and then the internship started which was for one year where a doctor has to work in all different departments like medicine surgery gynae obstetrics and different so i was so much full of that spirit of service that every man every patient who is coming to me is the manifestation of god and i have to serve him as god so i used to be in the hospital 24/7 all the time doing something or other my aim was not to learn anything my aim was not to learn medical knowledge to but my aim was just to serve so this one year of service that finished now next what people said that you should go ahead and do post graduation but i was not very keen on doing that but again for post graduation you have to do medical studies entrance exam so i went to my brother my younger brother and i stayed in his room he was also a doctor and he was doing he was in second mbbs so i stayed with him for 6 months or so for 2 months i did some studies for post graduation but again i started roaming here and there and this was the third turning point again i went in silence and this silence was the deepest of all the silence extreme thirst to know god arose in me i developed extreme vairagya for everything of this world and this was the period where i read hundreds and hundreds of books eastern and western philosophy each day i used to visit one temple each day one spiritual institution each day one guru sometimes church there was a period for 3 months i visited just church and forgot everything about hinduism the periods where i went to different religious institutions and followed them st bernard st john st ssc indian saints hinduism buddhism sikhism and once it happened that i was just wandering here and there the whole day not understanding what to do where to find the ultimate truth one day there was one institution there its name was ramkrishna math and mission so i went there and there was some prayer going on it was the evening time i just sat and i became bodiless first day every day i started going to that spiritual institution and every day i would become bodiless there were group of monks sitting there some sanyasis and they used to play and sing and i was so touched by their purity by the beauty so this was the third turning point that was going on which was so intense so intense that again i went in silence i stopped talking at all with anybody and in that period of silence i started getting as if some divine touchings or you can say that was a period when i saw i used to see almost every day huge audience sitting in front of me and i am telling them god's message i used to see visions where i am talking and i have become the messenger of god but which knowledge so i used to think it was the knowledge of vedanta upanishads vedas that knowledge i am telling others and bringing awakening in the lives of people masses so that was the phase and then i have sort started seeing two visions one to become a medical doctor to do post graduation and to serve the poor the lost the loveliest i was not interested in serving the rich my only purpose in life was to go to those poor people and to serve them the whole life the other vision was to realize god to know who is he what is he where does he live what does he do so there was there were two visions what to do i was caught up in this dilemma for a very long time 
and every day as i said i was to visit different institutions read different books participated in n number of discourses escon ramakrishna mission chinmay mission n number of institutions my elder sister she was in gyan and she just came in gyan without studying anything any of the scriptures she just went she is also a doctor one year elder so she went to the center and she felt this is my home and she started following all the dharnas and because of those dharnas there was lot of opposition at home my father threw away the light of shiva baba and all the books and everything and then she stopped going so whenever in during holidays i would come home she would say that i have realized god i said you how come <laughs> then i would i remembered once i took her to bhagavat katha you know bhagavat murli it comes ramayana gita bhagavat so there were seven days i took her forcefully so that she starts worshiping god worshiping krishna yeah. so she used to look here and there like this <laughs> and i used to feel pity for her poor thing i used to pray oh god give her bhakti yeah. and she used to say shiva baba open the lock of his intellect she used to say that your intellect is full filled with all straw bhusa huh. again i would go back to different place she was at the same place at my home doing mbbs with all the three my sister i and my brother all are doctors she is one year elder my brother is two year younger so i was in that extreme stage of dispassion disinterest having read these all books and scriptures i developed a very strong dislike for the life of householder but having read vivekananda and other people i realized that all religions they take you to the same destination as if there is a mountain and the destination is here you go by any path you will reach the same place but again my sister used to so say that this is the only path <laughs> i used to say you are a fanatic <laughs> because of you all the battles in the world are fought you are responsible for that all those you who used to say that this is the only path so so there was a war but then after having read all the scriptures i realized that let me also analyze what is brahma kumaris so once i went to brahma kumaris center so one sister was giving a course to another person one brother was sitting so i told that sister should i sit she said sit down and she was explaining god is light jesus christ said so i told her i want have a one question she said tell i said where it is written that god is light jesus christ has said she said bible i said where in bible old testament or new testament <laughs> so she was little afraid she said where is the life of jesus christ i said new testament she said it is said in new testament i asked her where in new testament matthew luke mark john <laughs> she got afraid she said i will ask didi and tell you next day but i never went again but i had a lot of respect for all those brahma kumaris who used to wear white clothes i remember when i was in 10th standard and all the brahma kumaris were coming from that side i had written one poetry on them i did not know who they are what they are but that white dress that shine of face attracted me at that time when i had no knowledge of it so this was my first or second interaction with brahma kumaris again i remember once having gone to the brahma kumari center and it was the 18th of january i did not know and everybody was in silence so nobody asked me who i am <laughs> so i just sat ate my brahma bhojan and left <laughs> without telling anybody <laughs> so there was a strong disturbance in my mind when i read something about this philosophy of brahma kumaris i divided the whole world in three parts first department of bhakti devotion all those who do worship second those who are sanyasis those give those who give up the world the path of isolation and third this brahma kumaris now i had to harmonize all these three 
So there was little disturbance, but then I knew that all these are paths towards God. And I had that intense love for God. I remember I used to cry, shed tears, asking, where are you? Where are you? What are you? Where are you? I used to roam here and there. Like a madman in search of God. What is he? Where is he? Where does he stay? What does he do? I want to know him. I remember once I visited one church and there were some books kept there. I took some of those books and I said, Sister, I wanted to purchase this. So that sister who was there, she asked me, why you want to purchase? And I, I, what I answered her, I don't remember, but she took away all my books. And she said, you are beyond all these books. It appears as if you are going to realize God soon. So that was the third phase of my life, which was November, uh, this was 2003, I think January or something like that. So, on one side was the study of scriptures, on another side was the love of God, and on the third side was medical knowledge. Now what should I do? Ultimately I realized and came to the conclusion that to realize God is the greatest goal of life. God realization is the highest. He who gives to God second place in life gives him no place. So I have to give up this medical knowledge. And I realized, I came to the conclusion that I have to renounce this world. So I made a list of about 50 institutions where I, need, I may join. And Brahma Kumaris was the last. <laughs> because I found that only sisters are staying inside. And I cannot become the person who will go and come. If I go, I should be inside, not a going and coming business. This is not for me. So I said, okay, let these are good people, but I will not go to them. So I made a list of, as I said, number of institutions. And ultimately I came to the conclusion that I have to give up this world, I have to renounce this world. I was fired with that sense of disinterest. I did not want anything of this world. I remember how I used to go in the discourses, sit there for hours together, sit in bodiless stage, as if crying, chanting, and feeling that his love, where is he? As if he is calling me, as if somewhere he is there, as if my work is yet undone. I did not know where I have to go. I had no guide, no guru. I was little confused. But my age was about 19 or 20. But I was fired with that passionate love of God. As if I would not live without Him, if I do not get Him. As if I will drop this mortal coil at this very moment. Such intense passion, such intense love of God, such intense dispassion. And I realized I have to give up this world and become a monk. Just like Saint Francis, just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just like Indian saints, Ramana Maharishi, Aurobindo, all these whom I have I read, had I read. And Ultimately, I real, came to the conclusion that I have to join this Ramakrishna Mutt. And when it was finalized, I told my brother with whom I was staying, and he was shocked. He did not know. He thought I was staying, doing medical studies. But all this was going on within me. But he said, go and please inform parents and then go. I said, I am not going to inform parents because Mahatma Buddha, he left family at home at night without informing anybody. Why should I inform? I will also go like that. And I was stressed. All of these people already left their families so fast. What I am doing here? Life is short. I have to realize God. What I am doing in this world? This is all waste. All the frivolous goals and aims and money and business and everything. I don't want anything. Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. I do not want anything of this world. I just want to know the highest. I came home. I told my parents that I am going to take sannyas. They were shocked. And I was imprisoned in my home for one and a half month. 
and about 150 people came round to convince me, to stop me, to tell me, please don't go, please don't go, please be here. And there were a lot of horoscopes, multiple things done. Many people came every day and tried to convince me why you are going, you are such a brilliant person. By that time my result of MBBS came and I was a topper there. And by the time also my post-graduation exam result came and I was getting admission in MD in any of the medical colleges in Maharashtra. I gave up that medicine seat, government seat. And uh, I tried to convince my parents but they did not accept. They said, no, this is all because of the hypnosis. My father wrote a letter to the Prime Minister of India yeah. that my son has been hypnotized, please help the helpless father. <laughs> to Atal Bihari Vajpayee, that was 2003, and multiple things, so many things I even don't remember now. But then, I was fired with dispassion. I was ready to burn all my medical certificates so that there is no coming back into this world. But my father came and he just hid all those things somewhere. And when it was finalized that I have to go, my mother said that, if you go and become a man, monk, I will go and jump in the well. I said, go and jump right now. Straight night, now. go in front of me and jump. <laughs> so much attachment, I knew she will not do this. <laughs> so outside there was an intense opposition, intense. But inside, my love for God was increasing. I was becoming more and more restless. My Dispassion, dis disinterest for the world was increasing every day. And I was restless, as if crying within, Where are you? Where are you? Please come, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord. I can't live without you. Where are you? Who are you? And ultimately many other things happened in between. My, I took my father to that ashram and that ashram my father said that our, he, we have taken loan for his study. Who will pay the loan? Your institution? <laughs> so that those people said, you first pay off the loan and then come to us. And for that again, I had to do six months some job. And during that six months, I worshipped God as mother. That was a new form of worship to me. Because I studied Ramakrishna Paramahansa and he had studied all the religions and followed. Not studied, but he tried to practice all the religions. So I thought, I have also to do practice all the religions. So that was the first and a very novel experience for me to worship God as my mother. I did not know who he is, but whole day, as if he is my mother, as if he is my mother. I had seen him as my father, as my sister, as my friend, as my lord for a long, long time, as the supreme preceptor, but never as a mother. So those six months I worshipped him as a mother. And again I gave up my resignation letter, I paid off all the bank loan and I was again ready for renunciation, to renounce the world. But where to go now? So. As I said, I had decided to join this institution, ashram, but that ashram has got so many branches, where to go? So I met one doctor and the doctor said, I also wanted to become a monk, but I could not, but you definitely become. He was the first sensible person whom I met, <laughs> who supported me for the first time. And he said that you go to South India, there there is one ashram near Vellore. So I went there, stayed there. Again my father called up and said, Oh, you have to pay. You gave up that government job in six months. You have to do it for two years. Otherwise pay two lakh loan to the government. Uh, two, lakh, uh, two lakhs to the government. Again I came back. So this all was going on for eight to nine months. So last moment I decided, now I am not going to listen to anybody. I am going and taking my final. So my sister told me, Okay, you have decided finally to go to Vellore, or that one place there, Natrampalli. Why don't you go via Mount Abu? I said, okay. <laughs> so that was 24th November, around 2003. But I told my sister, how can I go to Mount Abu? I don't follow any one of your rules and regulations, your Mariyadas. She said, you need not to follow anything. Such disinterest, even our center Nivasis don't have. <laughs> but she told me, I will take you to the center and those center people will ask you, how long you have been in Gyan? So tell them one year. <laughs> I said, this I am not going to do. I am not going to do this. 
she said please please do this now please do it for me so i said see now she wants to take me to her institution she is making me to say this i said okay so we went so we went to the center and the sister in charge nir pushparani didi was sitting and many other sisters were there so my sister took me my sister said he is my brother he wants to meet baba he wants to go for baba milan so that didi looked at me sister senior sister and asked how long you have been in gyan yeah. i said one year <laughs> <laughs> then she said me which center you go this my sister did not tell me <laughs> what should i tell i said that amravati where you, i used to stay so what that sister did she called up at amravati center <laughs> and sita didi was there and she said that neelam used to come but he never came so now i said i was a medical officer at one place so there i had used to go once or twice i had gone and i told the phone is not working there <laughs> because the center people used to are were my patients and they told me that phone is not working so i told the same thing here so didi said okay but how will you go we have all reservations done already two months back train i said in my mind i don't need any reservation i have gone to delhi to chennai to kolkata and to mumbai by sitting in common boogie i don't need any reservation i can walk go anywhere my internal search was like that and so next day i started my journey towards mount abu i sat in the common boogie i did not know where i am going but i was churning within that i have to read bhagavat that seven chapter is still remaining that uh, commentary by somebody on bhagavad gita is still remaining so many scriptures are yet i have to read and then once you read scripture then you take sanyas then you become monk and then you realize god the journey was very big for me so i sat in the train and the train started towards mount abu and i reached shantivan down so gate number 2 the bus entered and uh, the moment i stepped in shantivan i felt i have seen this place but i was also careful that nobody can hypnotize me <laughs> my decision is absolute no one can stop me no one of this planet earth none i was so resolute in my reserve, resolution so many people tried their everything some of our relatives came with their daughters and they said she is doing she is becoming doctor she is doing mbbs you both do worship also and medical practice also so many such people also came but i was not in that mood that was the mood of passion intense love that i don't want anything of this world that was the only thing i don't want your clothes i don't want your shoes i don't want anything your degrees nothing i just want only one thing where is he unless and until i know him i am not going to stop and there were constant tears with this thought in my mind so i reached shantivan first day gate number 2 entered deja vu i knew this place I had never come to this place Shantivan but I felt I knew this place and I felt as if I know where are the ways I knew as if this way goes to that way and there is something like dome there and that was tapasya dham I felt as if I have seen this but I was not talking with anybody I was calm I had even cut my hair about to become a monk <laughs> I slept the first night in shantivan at night i saw a dream and in that dream i saw lakshmi narayan standing and that was very live i got up in the morning and i felt what is this why i saw this but i did not pay any attention to this because i had to do so many things i have to tell the rosary ram raksha and hanuman chalisa and so many other scriptural things i used to do and uh, those four people who were there in the room they left for murli at 7 i felt a sense of relief and so that i can do my sadhana <laughs> i can do but i forgot i did not remember anything then i opened the book and finished it the whole day i was roaming at everywhere in shanti when not understanding where to go what to do whom to ask where i am what i am what is this place which is this place whom should i talk 
I did not have any knowledge. I just knew only one thing that I know, I want, I am in search of God, that's it. And then it was 7.30 in the evening and the traffic control was played and I felt, I knew this song, Shiv ki yaad rahe ki tab. I know this song hundred, I have heard this thousands of times and I was, somebody was as if pounding within me, I know this song, I know this song, I know this song, I know this song. I have heard this hundreds of times. When, where, what, never. I, I don't remember. And then it was Baba's Milan, 30th November 2003. And there was an announcement that the gates would be opened at 3 a.m., 3 p.m. So I went and sat there in the diamond hall at 3.30 and kept sitting there till 11 o'clock. And I was just crying. On that stage, I did not see, I did not know who was there, but I saw Jesus Christ, I saw Prophet Muhammad, I saw Guru Nanak, I saw Shankaracharya, I saw everybody whom I had read, as if they were moving there on the stage and I would see, I was seeing just a light there. And the, when I sat, the diamond hall was vacant. In between, it was full, but I was sitting there. I was bodiless, I did not know, I was just crying. Somebody was talking from the stage to me and that <clears throat> that voice told me that the one whom you are searching, I am that. And I remembered what I had said to my father. I had told my father, please don't stop me. Only and only if God comes and stops me, then only I will stop, otherwise I am not going to stop. And I was just shaken there. Something happened which never happened. I, that murli, I don't know what is that murli. That murli was in Hindi, but I was hearing shlokas from Gita. Some Sanskrit shlokas were coming to me. And the intense flow of light was coming to me. And that voice also told me another thing. That I choose you from this crowd. I did not know for what and who is saying this, but that voice told me that you have to explode like a bomb in the same hall one day. Like a spiritual bomb. So Baba left. And the brothers came, they were lifting chairs and said, Oh, what are you doing here? Baba has gone. What are you doing? Get up. And I saw the hall was vacant again. And I did not know. I was sitting there only. Eight, six, eight hours I was just sitting bodiless. And that supreme power has came, had come and it was filling me with power. And I went to my room and I slept after nine months for the first time. The next day, the sisters said, let's go for sightseeing which I was not interested in. And they came in front of global hospital and they said, this is our global hospital. Looking at the hospital, I remembered I am a doctor. <laughs> which I had forgotten. I said, who is the in charge? They said, come back soon, the blood, the bus will wait only for five minutes. So I went inside, searched, who is the in charge? I went to Dr. Pratap's cabin and I told him, I want to just join this place. He said, who are you? From which center? I had no center. Yeah. He said, where is the letter? I had no letter. So I came back. I went home and I announced at my family that sannyas is cancelled and they were overjoyed. <laughs> and I joined Global Hospital. So that was uh, year 2003, December. Mm -hmm. And the first day when I joined the hospital, Brother Ramnath got admitted in the hospital. And uh, Dadi Janki came to see him. And I, it was my first day, I did not know who is this lady. And Dr. Pratap introduced me, this is our new doctor. Dadi looked at me like this and she did like this. <laughs> and she kept her hand here. <laughs> and she said, this is Pakka Pakka Raj Rishi. I did not know what is Raj Rishi. And that was my first day again, when I went to Om Shanti Bhavan. People told me that you have to go to Om Shanti Bhavan when you are here for listening Murli. I asked them, where is the Murli? Is there Murli here? They said, this is headquarter. From here the Murli goes everywhere. I did not know. 
So I went and sat there in front, straight, first line. And Dadi, um, Prakashmani came and she started reading the Murli. Sweet children, forget everything that you have read till now. <laughs> so that was the starting point and then my journey started. And I again went back. I was here for two, one and a half year. Again went back, did my post-graduation, came back. And right now, in the global hospital from 10, 10, 10, 10th October 2010. So this is my short. Short. <laughs> but very A intense. Very intense. <laughs> Just a quick question. Yeah. What was your sister's reaction? She, at present? She is in Mumbai. She's no, no. When, when you decided this is that you belong to Brahma Kumaris. Uh, sitting in that diamond hall only, I had all the visions. I didn't but get your... your sister, your Lokic sister. Ah, Lokic sister? Yeah, she had tried to get you to go to the Brahma Kumaris right, for a long time. Right, right, yeah. And so what that was time her time I, I used to have a fight with her. Right. Yeah, but then when I came, I was just silent. She called up from there, has my brother reached? He, she called some mm -hmm. brother. And that brother said, something has happened to him, he is not talking. <laughs> And he has decided to stay here always for the whole life. And she was overjoyed. Uh -huh. She was just overjoyed. Because I defeated her many times. She used to say this, I used to say that. She used to say this. She used to say we look at everyone as brothers, brother souls. I used to say we look at everybody as gods. Now who is greater? Tell. Mm -hmm. God, I see at everybody as God. You say everybody as brother. So I used to defeat her. But then I was defeated once and for all. But in my defeat was my victory, and her victory also. So the thing of the uh, pilgrim, there's often this sense that, yes, you're on a journey, and lifetimes or years, and um, the pilgrim always travels very light, and there's only one possession that is always with the pilgrim, and that is a compass. But often they forget to look at the compass. But when they take the compass out and they look at it, the compass that is directing them is the love of God. Yeah. And so why was it so intense for you? And then having found God, was it equally intense? Not what you expected, more than you expected. You know, when I came to this place, I was so intoxicated, so intoxicated. I was just not understanding what has happened because I was about to go and give up this world to find God and I just found God like, like that without going through all that procedure. So I will just tell you one thing. When I came here, I asked another brother, what time you go to Pandabhavan? He said, me 3.30. I said, I have to come at that time. Then gradually I learned that there is a group of people who go at 3.00. And then there is another group who go at 2. So I decided to reach Pandapavan at 2. So I was so intoxicated, so intoxicated. So I remember those earlier days when I would sit in Baba's room, that Baba's hut, so much light I used to feel, I had to say, stop this now. Such intense light would come as if this was the thirst of many, many births which got extinguished here. And people would ask me, one brother asked me, how long you have been in Gyan? So I said, one month, yukti yukt. <laughs> so he said, one month you came here. Actually, I was in Gyan for one day. <laughs> so he said, for one month you reached Madhuban. So next time I made it six months. <laughs> so another brother asked, told me, you are in six months and you reached Madhuban. Then I made it one year. <laughs> so earlier there was a search and love of God. Now it was a post-realization period. So here, the thing that intensified my love of God was, I have reached late. I am very late. You very what? I am very late. You are late, okay. I am very late entry. Now people have gone far ahead of me. I have to do anything. And I had no money that time. And I used to feel, look at those Avyakta Murlis, from 69 till 2003, what I should do? I am come so late. So when I got some money, 
the first thing I did was to purchase all the Avyakta Murlis from 1969 till 2003. Because I came this much late. And I have to f- cover this journey. So, now it was little different. Now I wanted to understand what is this? What is this knowledge? What is this yoga? What are the deeper stages of yoga? And the one thing that helped me the most staying here from last 10 years is silence and the mountains of Mount Abu. I have spent hours together in silence, in solitude, churning this knowledge, understanding this knowledge and trying to be what He wants me to become. Earlier the love of God was just to realize Him, to know Him, to find Him. But now it was entirely different. Now it was to make His dreams come true. (laughs) So that intensified my love for Baba. So, what is the return that you've gotten from your previous, you told us in Shantivan, that you felt in your previous birth that you were a sannyasi. <laughs> I didn't, i not sannyasi, but I must be a, some yogi. Right. And a very intense yogi. <laughs> <laughs> whose search the for God was incomplete, intense. which got completed in this birth. Can you see a time when you won't be intense? When? When you won't be intense. Nowadays or that time? No. Moving Throughout. forward, moving yeah, forward, yeah, do yeah. you see a time when you won't be intense? And what will that look like? Uh, <laughs> I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't English be as author, entertaining. One, would one it? English author had written a wonderful thing. He said, when I look into future, when I look into my future, it is so bright that it dazzles my eyes. Wow. So I don't see that it will be any darkness anywhere because I know when I walk in light when God is my canopy and when I walk with his gyan with his love in his heart no darkness can ever touch me Mm. no maya can ever touch me beautiful Um, do you still cry? Hmm? do you still cry? Uh, in my life I cried never never for any human being I cried only and only for God. During those period I used to cry and nowadays automatically tears of love come from Baba. When I remember how much he has helped me, what I was, I was nothing. I did not know anything. I was such a newcomer. And when I came here, I I had come in jeans and t-shirt. And on that very first day I threw that and wore white, which is I am wearing till now. So I had nothing with me. And I feel that he filled me with everything. I remember, I'll tell you one more thing. Uh, I used to do churning a lot, stay in silence, but I was afraid of speaking. I was afraid of this mic thing. So that one brother from Pandabhavan who organized his classes, he used to call me, can you give class today? I avoided it for two years because I did not want to come into limelight and disturb, disturb my inner silence. But once he just caught me and he says that today you have to give a class. So that was 2013 or 2014, something like that. So I did not know. I said, I have never spoken in front of Mike. (laughs) What should I do? So I went to Baba's room. I told Baba, what should I do? I have to give a class. One hour. I can't. It's too much. Probably this is for the first time I'm sharing something very deep. We like that. <laughs> <laughs> or should I stop myself from oh, sharing? Oh, no, no. Please do. Please do. <laughs> You're amongst friends. It's very, very personal. <laughs> so I sat in front of Baba and I told Baba, what should I do? Now I'm caught. Just as Brahma says, no, I'm caught. I was walking and I'm trapped. So I was trapped. So I was just sitting. And it was the morning hours, maybe 2.30 in the morning. I was sitting in Baba's hut. 
And Baba said to me, Henceforth, when you will speak, my voice will get combined with your voice. That's why go, don't be afraid. When you will speak, my voice get combined in your voice. So, suddenly I felt energetic mm -hmm. and my fear was gone. And that was the first. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've had the pleasure of hearing any of your classes, um, but you're becoming exceedingly popular, right? There's one English author, he has written, I woke up one day and found myself famous. I find myself what? Famous. Famous, okay. So this, I feel this as a play, mm. a part of the play. And this play should have everything. You are, the, your topic is pilgrim's journey. And I would like to add one thing here, how to measure that we are progressing spirituality. Mm -hmm. So here is the point, that gradually, on one side is blame, on one side is opposition, on other side is fame, another side is popularity, but they both you feel are similar. Mm -hmm. And you start remaining detached from both of them. So when somebody comes and says something, it's okay. When somebody says something, somebody will oppose, somebody will cast aspersions, somebody will criticize. So when these both things happen, I look at myself as a detached observer. And the more I increase my detachment, I feel I am progressing. And I, many times I feel that this is the barometer of spirituality. How much freedom you have, internal freedom, from what the world is saying. The, so this uh, internal detachment is the barometer of... It, it would seem that, that with you there are many paradoxes. Yeah. And it's not about resolving them, but yeah, managing yeah. them. Managing, the, as I said, managing. on one side is medical practice, on one yes. side is patients. You're on one dealing side, with bodies I'm all day long. I'm dealing with bodies, on another side is spirituality. So there yes. are two persons existing in me, yeah. a yogi and a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> I would think there's probably more. <laughs> and but, so, um, and I see this part of you as well, that, that although very popular, that you're also a solitary man, that you're reclusive. In order to have a conversation with them, I had to offer to do an interview. <laughs> uh, I can say that, yes. But the greatest challenge for me is the medical profession. But as I said, from my childhood, I had one intense desire to serve, to serve, to serve. I remember during my internship, I used to do dressings and I used to have tears feeling that this is as if God. So that sanskar is there in me since childhood. And when I came in spirituality, spirituality took over, but I would say now, ki I feel great joy, even though we are serving bodies, even though we are treating bodies, but at the same time now, we have that another perspective, that whilst interacting with every patient, Inside I make a practice that I am a soul and I have to give him powerful sakash for even one second if I give him, even one second, I don't know whether this patient is going to come back to me again or not. I make it a point that I touch him and as if when I write the prescription, as I am feeling some pure vibrations in those prescriptions, when I am touching the patient, as if my touch will have some healing power, as if my drishti will help him something. I do not know whether I am going to meet this person again or not, whether a BKs or other people, Brahmins or the non-Brahmins. But I feel the sheer joy of serving them. There is a deep sense of contentment within. Sometimes, you know, when it is a OPD is so heavy, 70 patients, 80 patients, just in one sitting, I alone am sitting and just seeing patients non-stop. 
all other departments are closed and gone home, but I am just still sitting because the patients are coming non-stop. But inside, I feel, oh, these many patients, these many patients. But when I finish with, I feel a deep sense of satisfaction. My day has not gone waste. I had not gone in waste. I have done something, at least for these human beings. Somebody has come in pain, somebody has come in deep pain. You know, I received the phone calls whole night. But I know when somebody is helped at the time of need, that person never forgets you. Somebody is coming at one o'clock in the morning and he is in acute pain and a doctor sees him and relieves his pain. That person never forgets. The whole life that person doesn't forget. So medical profession gives me a great sense of satisfaction, mm -hmm. a great sense of happiness. Even though sometimes I forget to see them as soul because of busy schedule. Sometimes I forget to have that spiritual touch, but I always have the thought within that I have to relieve their pain, their misery, their suffering. And if I can contribute a little in this, my life has not gone in vain. My day has not gone in vain. So this is the medical front and the spiritual front is the efforts to become Bab Sama. The other, um, almost like a contradiction is your you're very independent, yeah. and yet you are part of a big institution. Right. And um, within that, uh, you know, which consciousness predominates? And um, if it is that of your individuality, that you're an individual, a unique individual, does that challenge or inspire others? And if it does, assuming it does, what do you do about it? <laughs> As I said, as you said, reclusive, uh, I love solitude too much. I love to be in the gathering, I love to be in the Brahmin family, but whenever I get time, I just get detached from everything, from everyone. Like I will say, I have holidays on Sundays, so whole Sunday I would spend in solitude and in silence, churning Sundays murli whole day, sometimes eight hours, sometimes six hours, sometimes more, reading one murli almost twenty, twenty times, trying to understand from every angle. So, uh, and when I come out and I have to give a class on that very murli, I feel as if I am sitting somewhere very high and what I am speaking is not mine, but it is coming from above and in that bodiless stage, then that service is being done. So I feel that another joy of that. So, and again when I come into groups, gatherings, I love to enjoy with them, with play with them, just as we have a morning group. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of entertaining activities there, creative activities, a mm -hmm. lot of spiritual activities. We interact, we laugh, we joy. We have a lot of fun there. But once that is over, I get detached. Once that is over, once the hospital work is over, I get detached. Mm. So we'll, we'll get to whether that. that inspires others or not. Mm -hmm. That you have to ask them. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Um, so we'll get to the Murli in a minute. But I have to. This is a little personal thing. I hope you won't mind. Um, but the first interaction I ever had with this brother, uh, it was just a meeting on the road, and out of the blue, without any preamble. He, you've probably forgotten this, but he asked me, just out of the blue, we'd never introduced or anything, and he said, what is honesty? And I remember the spontaneous answer at that time came, you know, without thinking about it, um, vulnerability, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. So now it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> and the question that uh, I want to ask you in relation to honesty is, uh, apart from Baba's Murli and your yoga, how do you know you're being honest with yourself? Many times I feel I'm not honest. Oh, that's uh, being honest. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do justice to my medical profession, one. And second, I have to do justice to Baba's Murli. 
if I get too much busy with patients, I feel that day I have not just done justice to Baba's churning of Baba's murli of that particular day. And I feel as if this is my dishonesty. Oh. This is one. Second, sometimes yoga pulls me too much and sometimes I feel I have not done honesty to this patient. Uh, though that rarely happens, but still, uh, sometimes it is not possible for me to see one patient twice, those who are admitted, because of so many admissions and so many emergencies. So once they are admitted, I see them very next day. When I had joined this hospital, I used to take round three times a day, because that time spirituality was less. I was fired only with one thing, that I have to serve, I have to serve, I have to serve, I have to serve, nothing else. This churning and all these things came later on. So that time, uh, so again there is a two things, medical profession and spirituality. So when I go too much on this side, I feel I am doing dishonest, I am dishonest here. When I go yeah. too much on that side, I feel I am dishonest here. So I have to strike that balance. Uh, but now, nowadays, or from last few months or years, I will say, uh, I have come to a point where I feel that now I am balancing. Though I should not give myself that certificate, but internally I feel, okay, I am balancing and coming slightly to the definition of that honesty. And in medical professions, you talked about vulnerability. Here sometimes you have to become very hard, oh. very relentless. Because otherwise you will also start crying with the patient. They come with different problems, they come with different uh, critical illness, they come in the last stage, they come in such a moribund stage, I have to talk with the relatives. Now suppose imagine one patient has come and there are 20 relatives with the patient and they all are so anxious, mm. so fearful. And I know this patient is going to die in one hour. And they are so anxious and they are feeling what we should do, whether he will survive, whether he will not. So these are very tough situations. Sometimes another tough situation is breaking the bad news. Patient has died and then you have to break the news to the relatives that he has died. And they are not ready to accept. Even though the patient was sick for such a long time, even though the patient had some disease which had spread throughout the body, so there are very, very challenging fields in medical professions. Very, very challenging things. Imagine. But with every challenge, I learn something. With every challenge, and I have seen that if I am honest with myself, with patients, that honesty takes time, but it helps in the long run. Only thing is that I don't have to make a show off. And I feel somewhere there is a, some hypocrite which is, who is sitting within, who is trying to show off. As if he is not, I am not that, but I am trying to show off that I am this. So, my spiritual journey is to get rid of that pseudo me, that false me, who is sitting within. And I have just glimpse of that person. I do not know that person, because that person is in dark. So I am to reach that person, I am trying to reach. And... The best thing that has helped me in this is Amrit Vela. Mm -hmm. That gives me That's a time. That's at 2 o'clock, right? Yeah, that is <laughs> extremely early. Only, I feel I have seven strengths. Okay. A for Amrit Vela. Mm -hmm. B for Brahmacharya, that is purity. Mm -hmm. C for these classes, they help me to churn mm -hmm. or churning. Okay. D for Doctor. <laughs> e. e for emotions. Very strong emotions of love of God. Very strong emotions to serve the patient. Very strong emotion to do everything for that patient. To give up gyan, to give up yoga. I remember once I was sitting in Baba's Avtaran, in Shantivan, mm -hmm. and Baba was in front. And uh, Dr. Satish Gupta was sitting. He told me, there is one mother, one patient in trauma, would you like to go and see her? Now, it was in between Baba's, Baba was sitting, how can I leave Baba and see? And that hospital is different, they have different doctors, I am not responsible there, I am responsible here. The entire thing is different. So I could have said no, or any excuse. But he showed me one report there only, and Baba was talking, 
and he said this is the report and that was one mother from Sangam Bhavan so I felt this report is very bad this blood gases carbon dioxide patient is retaining oxygen saturation is going down I said I'll go I left Baba and I went to the hospital and I saw that patient was gasping about to die and straight I intubated the patient put her on ventilator did multiple procedures line, trains, tubes mm. and she got saved and when I returned Baba had already gone <laughs> Um, but I feel, still I felt happiness. So when the duty calls, everything reduces to nothing. So oh. doctor, D, e, e, emotions, and then F, F. <laughs> food. <laughs> Good, I was going to ask you about that. Food is oh. my greatest strength. And last, F, G, G in Hindi means Gambhirta. Gambir Tham in seriousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are the seven. Yes, yes, yes. Now let's go to the next question. <laughs> let's go to <laughs> I, I hope that we kind of come up in a natural way rather than asking you deliberately. But I wanted to know, and again, you're very unique in this, in, in this part of India, that uh, your diet of choice is vegan and largely raw. Did Not you, largely. Completely. And uh, wondering if you kind of just came to that or it was an acute, it was also intense a journey. decision. It was a journey. Okay. It was a journey. Yeah. Spending a lot of time in nature, I observed animals, what they eat. And how strong a monkey is, jumping here and there. <laughs> and they are just eating leaves. Mm -hmm. Look at the elephant, how strong the elephant is. What is it eating? Leaves. And I began my journey of raw food, rawism. To start with, first boiled, steamed, and then I gave up within two days. And I came straight to 100% raw. And I read hundreds, a lot of literature about this. And every day my faith increased in it. And I feel that sense of lightness within and periods of fasting and how the soul consciousness increases. And I feel as if I am in a com continuous stage of detox. Can you tell me what you had for breakfast? Nothing. Wow. <laughs> That's hard to The first try. diet I take at after 12. No food, no water till then. And that will be? That will be green juice, which okay. I got with me right now. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Because the first thing that should go in the body, it is a breakfast. You break the fast. It should be very light. What you have done at night to eat so much, the stomach was resting at night. What is the philosophy of breakfast? How can you are eating so much, but there is you have done nothing. The whole night you were sleeping, so stomach was at rest. So the first thing should be total fast. Let the digestive system go on physiological holiday. You know Shelton? Dr. Herbert Shelton of America? No. He has done the maximum research on this. Huge number of books written in 1930s which are so relevant today. And each and every word he wrote about diet, about fasting, about food and how he cured hundreds of patients just with raw is amazing, amazing. So, and that will increase your energy, that will increase your strength, the digestive system will go on rest. And the more you are on that, less work this has to done and the mental and the spiritual clarity increases. First, continuous stage of detox. Third, you get lot of time. Otherwise, half of the time is wasted in morning breakfast, lunch and dinner. I had the desire to get rid of all these three because I want to devote maximum time to healthy diet which will not require any preparation, which will not be made by any other person, which should be made by me only. And is that easy here in Mount Abu? Extremely easy for okay, me. Okay, good. Extremely easy for me because you know in Pandavan there is one department, mm -hmm. there one brother prepares so many juices. Mm -hmm. So juices, afternoon you take raw, evening you take fruits. And I came to one realization that how much little is needed for survival. Yeah. And what Brahmins are eating is too much and why they are falling sick. 
थ्री टाइम्स ब्रह्मा भोजन एंड फोर टाइम्स टोली एंड यू आर योगी हाउ कैन यू बी योगी योगी इज समबड़ी हु इज लाइट सो आई फेल्ट दिस फूड हैज गिवन मी इंटेंस स्पिरिचुअल क्लैरिटी वेन आई हैव टू टेक अ वेरी टफ डिसीजन दिस हेल्प्स बिकॉज दिस दैट इज नथिंग देयर सो कंटिन्यू स्टेज ऑफ डिटॉक्स एंड अनदर थिंग इज अबाउट इंटरपर्सनल रिलेशनशिप्स क्लैरिटी another thing is soul conscious stage another thing is the moment you sit in yoga you just become bodiless and reach param dham very fast so huge literature is available on royism on raw food and then in between that veganism came mm-hmm. so that was okay. a part of it but it is a very small part of it i will rather than using the word veganism i will say plant based diet yeah likewise that's better likewise maybe this will be the key for somebody to change their diet absolutely today i'm cognizant of the time and i've got more questions um a couple about the future and a couple about today's morley one more thing the greatest inspiration i got for this diet was from golden age yes the greatest okay. inspiration yes. the first question that came to my mind was what do deities eat yes do they sit mm. with a pressure cooker and with that flame and milk and all those things no, no. They, it's not possible i have two three murli quotations from baba yes there are many murlis which baba has said they take why that natural beauty is there yeah. there is one lady who had a breast cancer nolfi christine nolfi from denmark way back so everybody told her operation this that but she denied everything she went back to her family to her farm house and there she continued with the raw and she cured herself with her why her cancer and she wrote lot of books on that you can go and search her book uh, the raw diet for the cancer so there are huge number of research so the more you eat natural your intellect becomes strong spiritual clarity increases continuous stage of detox no question of i don't remember having had any cough cold fever abdominal pain diarrhea from last so many years it is four years that now i'm practicing no body pain no the moment i go to sleep in 10 seconds i go to sleep and sleep becomes very less automatically and it is not that you feel weak rather you feel more powerful it's not that you feel giddiness no now i am fasting since last 18 hours the last diet i had yesterday 6 pm oh after that no food no water i am enthusiastic i have no feeling of any weakness rather there is an energetic feeling within why because stomach it at rest <laughs> now the first that food that will go will be very light leaves and juices and that will infuse you with spiritual strength maybe we should have a s- you can try class on this try yeah if you feel I'm it is okay with you because it's all pilgrims progress and journey so two things can yeah. we jump into the future if you have the opportunity hmm. uh of the world stage to deliver a succinct message hmm. uh what would it be and what is the effect you would like it to have <laughs> before the whole world of fam- brahmin family oh brahmin family no, no they've no. got it already <laughs> they've got it <laughs> i'll tell them that soul is infinite and infinite cannot be satisfied with anything which is finite mhm so no pleasure of this world no happiness of this world no things of this world no facilities of this world no object no possession no wealth can ever satisfy the soul the soul will feel satisfied only and only with love of god which is above all so come ye all ye all that labor and i shall give thee rest jesus says come ye all all who are laboring come all and god's love is there and once you come to that god's love your hearts will come to the stage of eternal rest that restlessness that peacelessness will go away and god has come now come ye all no. all to him 
some years ago, quite a few years ago, actually, there was a small group of us with Aviak Bhaptada. Yeah. And he told us categorically on our asking that the prophet's souls had not come yet. Yeah. And we know they have to come to Baba. So if in the scheme of things, you were to be the instrument for one or all of the prophet's souls, which one would you choose? <laughs> Your questions are very tough sometimes. <laughs> and what would you, in, in this incarnation... I will choose Abraham. You would choose Abraham. And what would you because tell Because he is the father you, of three religions. Yeah. He is not just the father of one, he is the father of three religions. Mm -hmm. Right. Jewish, okay. Christianity and Islam. Mm -hmm. So once he comes... Christ will, will come, come, Muhammad will come, and Moses will come. And, so what and once he... the Western world come, the Indians will come. He was the first pilgrim, right? He is the first pilgrim. Yes, he got sent so away from him. his land. <laughs> and what would you tell him? Judaism is very interesting. I will tell him what Jesus Christ told Jewish about Abraham. Jesus said, before Abraham, I was. Before Abraham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I am, rather. That's what yes. he said. Before Abraham, I am. I am even before you. Now, coming to, I'm trying to squeeze in, this in by 12.30. Um, Baba's Morley today, and uh, you can't be the master without being the child. Yeah. And this is one of the things, like he, he has a very serious persona, uh, and yet as soon as he starts laughing, the innocence in the child is, is so evident. So, do you make effort to be the child or effort to be the master? Which? There's no effort in becoming a child. Really? We are, really. I feel as if, when I see Brahmin family, I always have, I'm not just a child in front of Baba, but right from the time I came till now, I always feel that I have to learn from each and every Brahmin. Mm -hmm. And I'm a child and I go to them and ask Beautiful. them what they do, what is their lifestyle, what Beautiful. they eat, what, how, how they do yoga, everything they do, how, what is their food. And I feel I have to learn from everyone. You remember when you met me for the first time, I don't know whether you remember that or not, but you had asked me one question. Sister Vadi asked me, who are you? And she said to me, told me, don't answer me that which I already know. <laughs> who are you? So I churned this topic a lot, who am I? And I came to the conclusion, that time, I had come to the conclusion that I am a pilgrimage who is in the Beautiful. journey of consciousness Beautiful. and the goal is perfection. Beautiful. I am that pilgrim Beautiful. in the journey of consciousness. Wow. Wow. We do not progress from darkness to light, we progress from lesser light to higher light. So I am that pilgrim who is progressing from lesser light to higher light. So in that sense, I am a child. And along those lines, um, recognizing the importance of elders, right? Every yeah. society and religion needs elders. And we are very fortunate in, in the elders that we've had and uh, what have you. And I'm always intrigued by the different generations. And so um, what you're, of course, of a younger generation... And there might even be one after you. We must be nearing the end at some point. Um, but what do you feel it is that your generation has to show those of us who preceded you? What yeah. is it you would like us to know or that we are not seeing? Rather than what the elders have to give the younger ones, what do the younger ones have to you are asking us. about what message we have to tell them? Or not, not message. Them? I, I don't know if it's a message. But um, just that awareness of the different generations, those who are with um, Rama Baba, those who are with uh, Aviyak Bhaptada, and now there are Brahmins who've not met either, and uh, so that their experience will be in some ways different, um, mostly the same, but there will also be differences. And sometimes you can't see, you think you're in the role of teaching everybody, but what can the younger ones teach us? What can the younger ones show the older ones? And I don't mean the daddies. They are the yeah, consummate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? I have seen uh, many souls who have come in Gyan off late. Uh, 
a few one or two souls i know who are in the hospital only and they have so deep love for baba mm. so deep mm-hmm. intense love for murlis and so deep intense love for amrit vela i just feel if such a love uh, everybody gets such a love what this yagya yes. would become and when i see seniors for example now one thing is very clear that they had enough stock of purshat and they have done so much thing mm-hmm. for the yagya mm-hmm. and uh, there's no comparison at all no and i myself personally staying here from last 10 years i keep on visiting all uh, the seniors of yagya like who are in gyan from 15 years 16 years uh, 20 years 40 years 50 years and i keep on asking them tell me your experiences of brahma baba tell me your experiences of madhuvan tell me your experiences of your sp- uh, spiritual life tell me your experiences about purity i keep on asking them different questions and sometimes some of them i feel they have lost that initial spark they have become very dull mm-hmm. probably because of lack of churning probably because of lack of newness the same thing same thing same routine same everything disappointment disappointment some frustration and they are seeing that their colleagues have gone ahead and they have become maharatis and they are there only so when i see that this is one group and another group of uh, people are those who are very young mm-hmm. and they are so deep lean love with baba that uh, there's one brother who says that i just feel why these brahmins don't use baba i keep on using him all the time nice i keep on using him every moment i keep on using him i feel pity that these brahmins don't use baba <laughs> so he said like that i was feeling so nice this brother is saying yeah. such a deep love for god and he has just now come in gyan it doesn't appear that they are new it appears as if they are in gyan from 50 years okay so love of god newness novelty some creativity these okay. are some of the new things that new generation has brought in and definitely the previous generation can learn learn or they can take some leaf from their pages and make some uh, reengineering of their efforts hmm Uh, it was just a question that had come up recently and uh, um, a fairly new Brahmin, uh, we were conscious that she hadn't had these experiences that the daddies, you know, would come to Miami and uh, other seniors and Aviak Baba and all of those things and she never had them. And, and she said, but Wadi, we get everything remotely. And I just thought it was interesting the choice of word one remotely how we would normally use that but in the context of technology and so you implied it earlier on that it doesn't matter baba's relationship is with each individual they may not have come under the same circumstances as i did or you did but baba will feed them the same way because if you're a brahman i think it is a given that we all get the same experiences the intensity might be a little different but the same experience i um just one um i i don't know whether we have time for it but um it was to do with i think the blessing today mm-hmm. which was about being special yeah and so some of baba's children are very obviously special um the feedback they get is that they're special but maybe for a lot of us um we don't feel we're very special we don't necessarily do anything special so how would you encourage those souls not to compare themselves with others but that they too are special and to feel that and not just saying it like a mantra food is the answer food it looks strange but this is my own experience oh, interesting food is the answer our touch with ourselves will become intense when we will go towards more towards nature beautiful the more we spend time in nature sun gazing barefoot walking staying in nature to feel the fresh air all these things in turn gradually will make you more and more soul conscious and then will help you in seeing your relationships with others as a detached observer there's one person ray from israel who practices bridarian 
he says he had a girlfriend and he used to miss her and then he started the change of diet that he realized that she is not the person whom he should miss because there is a lot of he could understand that relationship in a better manner when he became more and more he did not have knowledge of soul but he said individual individuality when he achieved automatically a detachment happened and when that detachment you can see your relationships as they are and with that uh, what is your question the answer will come indirectly so this is also yeah. one of the ways other ways you all knows which which uh, will come in the murli and you realize that i am a very special soul i am a very individual soul very very special and your connection with baba will 100% increase this is a new experience for me also yeah last yeah i would like you to read this and then answer it answer what what you read <laughs> question <laughs> These are Baba's words. Please read it. Please share it. Do you know what speciality you have that made God fall in love with you? <laughs> Do you remember this morning? <laughs> yeah. God has fallen in love with us. No, no. 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 He said you not not <laughs> <laughs> everyone. Not no, no. Not interested in the plural. Each one can answer for themselves, just you. Think about it. My thirst for love of God. I think that was the one thing. I remember that phase of my life, those nine months, I was mad like anything. I did not want anything, nothing, 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 nothing. I used to stay awake. I remember three days of my life, three days and three nights. I was continuously crying. Wow! Only crying, listening to songs of Mira. Mira <laughs> is a saint. Just as whatever she sang, I was just crying and crying and crying and crying. Where are you? Where are you? I I don't want anything else in this world. I just want you. Nothing else. I don't want your world. I don't want your things. I don't want name, fame, glory. I don't want medical profession. I don't want seva. I don't want anything from you. I just want you and nothing else. So such was my intense uh, passion, honesty, integrity. That is one thing. And second, unbroken purity. The so two things. probably rest you can ask him <laughs> <laughs> i'll have a word with him tomorrow morning but not at 2 o'clock <laughs> that's just a part of life i'm not very fastidious about it for telling others this it should be done like this it should be done like yes, this yes. i do this probably whatever i have shared yes. today this i have shared in last 10 years for the first time otherwise i don't teach nor talk nor mention about these topics ever but she is a very very smart <laughs> interviewer <laughs> she extracted out of me all this otherwise i would always remain silent on these topics which there i talked today uh, there was someone who said well when you when anyone's interviewing what i'm looking for is to see their dhan uh, their bhavna <laughs> their bhavna so i'm hoping that you're fully satisfied that you saw a lot of bhavna and so big big thanks brother beautiful thanks.